Have you ever had a moment where your partner shares a desire with you and you feel like you're going to explode? You feel like there is no way in hell you're gonna be able to embrace, accept, or honor their desire. It's just too confronting. If you've had this situation, then today I am talking to you. My name is Jacqueline Foster and I am the author of I Touch Myself, Lessons to Wake Up Desire and Fire Up Your Sex Drive. And this channel is about providing you with permission and how-to tips to communicate and live out your sexual desires. Okay, so this question of how do we handle those moments of, oh my gosh, my partner wants something, I don't know if I want it, I'm freaking out, I feel like I'm frustrated with them, my gosh, I have moments where I hate them, I don't wanna be with them, like how do I handle this? Desire can be something that actually, it sounds off the bat like, ooh, desire, that's wonderful. But desire, when we actually get into the nitty gritty of it, can get really scary. And it can feel really threatening and it can trigger us a lot. So how do we start to navigate this, especially when we're receiving a desire from the other person where it's not something that we actually say and admit for ourselves? What do we do in those situations? Well, today in particular, I'd like to offer you one question you can start to ask yourself that can begin to set you free from any feelings of being triggered or really having these cycles of feeling the same painful responses again and again and maybe thinking, like, why is this happening to me? This always happens to me. WTF, how do I get this to stop? I was in the car with my partner about, oh my, this was years ago now, we were sitting in the parking lot of the grocery store about to go in and he looks over at me and he's just like, babe, I think we should open up our relationship. I think that both of us, you and I, we should just be able to have sex with other people. I look back at him and my whole face drops and I'm like, I can't, I can't even think of what to say. I'm in shock and I'm furious and all I can think is get me out of this car. We are done. Now, I was in that moment, of course, I didn't have the sense of humor or the lightness about it I have now, but I'm very grateful that my boyfriend said, hey, we're gonna go home and we're gonna talk about this. No grocery shopping was done. We left, we went home, and he started to say, babe, I love you, I wanna talk about this. This is not in any way am I saying I don't wanna be with you, but I wanna have this conversation. And so luckily I was able to stay with it and keep the dialogue open. And I wanna share with you a question that I'm now more aware to ask that I wish I knew to ask myself back then because I think it would have opened up a new door for me and really helped me lean into things and be more open to the conversation a little bit faster than I was at the time. So what's this question? And before I do, I want to share these wise words from A.A. A. Milne, the author of Winnie the Pooh. And they go like this. You are braver than you believe, you are stronger than you seem, and you are smarter than you think. I say this because the reflection question I'm gonna give you is one that puts you really in the driver's seat of your response. And the question is this, how is my life happening for me? How is this situation, how is this thing that I'm going through and experiencing happening for me? The reason this question is so important is because when we're in these moments of pain, we start to have a choice for ourselves. We can either respond in a way that perpetuates the pain, or we might try to push it away or avoid it, or we can choose to respond in the, in, to our pain in a way that can eventually bring peace. And the way we do that is to start to get in the driver's seat and ask ourselves, how is this happening for me? What is the thing I can learn about myself here that can actually set me free? And I, this is so important because ultimately the best way for us to learn to really truly deeply enjoy the relationships we're in and enjoy ourselves as we present in those relationships is to find the way that we can feel peace in them. And the way that we can feel peace is to recognize the ways we can learn and go for, grow from those relationships, to see how our shared desires can deepen our relationships with ourselves and our partner. 
There truly can be liberation in sharing desires, but it does require us to switch our perspective and start to see how our experiences are happening for us and not just to us. So my challenge is this, if you are in the, this place where you're experiencing some pain, some hurt from a shared desire, from a request, take a moment to give yourself some time. Step away, find a quiet, peaceful place where you can be in a bit of reflection where there's, there's no stress, there's just a way for you to, to be with yourself for yourself. And in that place, ask yourself, how is this situation happening for me? I always recommend doing this as a journaling reflection. I think it's so nice to do that and just to let ourselves organically see what comes up. And once you do that, leave a comment below. Let me know, one, what is it like to do this reflection? Do you find it triggers you more initially or brings you a sense of liberation? What do you notice in this process? Leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and also make sure to come on over to JacquelineLaceyFoster.com where you can pop in your email so that I can send you updates and links I don't always post here on these YouTube videos and in this channel. Wishing you an amazing day. Keep your desire alive and I will see you next time. Mwah.